going to prepare for the next shoe for the Calgary Stampede 2013 Blacksmiths Competition. It's the lateral extension bar shoe. It's made out of 400 millimeters of 20 by 10 steel. I've got a plan where I'm going to upset the shoe, where I'm going to bump it up, because I've got to lose some material. The piece of steel I got is very long, and I need to lose some material to get the shoe down into size and proportion. When I look at the picture, I can see it's a lateral extension, and my bump starts basically at my toe, first toenail, and it goes to the end, getting slightly wider as it goes to the end. And we can put normal steel on the shoe, and we can see there's quite a big lateral extension. Okay, we've got to upset quite a lot of material. And it's got to start at the toenail at zero and come to maximum bump at the heel. We're starting with 400 mil and we've got to bump it down to 370. And that's going to be stage one to bump the outside heel up. And we're going to visualize about how long the bump is going to be to correspond with the shoe, with the finished shoe. It's going to be just a bit longer than this because by the time I bump this up, it's going to get shorter. When we're bumping, it's very important to keep it straight. Once it starts to bend, it's no longer bumping. It's bending. I'm trying to keep it at 10 millimeters thick. I've bumped the steel down to 370 millimeters. Now I've got to mark the center of my toe. Not the center of the steel, the center of the toe. And I'm going to mark it on the inner edge. So if I've got to move my toe at all, I don't have a mark on the face of the steel. I'm going to mark the center of the toe 155 mil from the outside heel. So I put a mark there, 155. Once I've marked the center of the toe of the foot, I've got to heat it and bump the toe up. What I want to be able to do now is bump my toe. Once I've used about half the heat, I'll bend the toe. Nice round toe in the picture. A nice toe bend in it. Got my toe bend down, I've got my outside and inside branch set. Now I've got to mark the steel, 75 mil from the inside heel, and that's going to be my bar. I'm going to bend it there to 95 degrees, then I'll hockey stick it back in. I'll bend it to 45 degrees. Now we're going to take it to the face of the anvil, and we're going to hockey stick it. So now, I'm going to hit this outside corner and continue this reverse bend. It's bending in towards the toe. Now I'm going to push it in by about one third. I've got a lot of upsetting to do. Now I'm going to take it to the horn. I'm going to look for the middle and I'm going to put it offset just to set my frog plate. And you can see this corner is flicking up a bit. That's good. That'll help us when we come to weld. We can see the shape of the back of the bar starting to happen. And then we've got, then we've got our frog supports coming in. And we've got this corner that we can be able to weld back in to the lateral extension. When we scarf it, don't scarf the whole thing. Leave the front corner thick. Otherwise, you'll end up with a hole in the front of your weld. I'm going to scarf it at an angle like this, leaving the front corner thick. See there, that's kicking around into the trailer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bend my inside branch. Line up the bar with the toe. Right now we should be able to see the shoe's about half made. 
We've got the inside branch made, the bar coming across. All we've got to do now is bring the outside heel, scarf the outside heel and bring it over. So I scarf the end and bend the branch. I'm going to scarf it on the inside corner. The outside of the heel is full thickness because that's the end of the lateral extension. And now we just push it together. Get it all balanced up. I've got the inside basically where I need it, so it's touching. You can see the shape of the back coming now, and I've got the finished shape shoe. I don't round this corner off. I want to leave this corner sharp right now so that I've, it's really defining my lateral extension. The horn, give it a wire brush. Now I like to put my flux on when the shoe is orange. That way the flux melts onto the shoe. With the flux melting onto the shoe, it won't come off when I put it into the forge. When I come out, I'll just tap it together a couple of times and then I'll start working on the scarfs. Get the scarf in, get the scarf in. I'm chipping it in with the edge of my hammer. So we can see there in one heat, I've got it 90% welded. Now it needs just one more heat to clean it up. But we can see there, we've got everything welded in about the right place. We flux it. It's not hitting it too hard. It's bringing the scarves together. Work it over the horn, start shaping up that back corner. Don't go down the horn too far or you'll lose the shape of your frog support. Now I'll start pulling out my frog support with the round of my hammer. Now I need another heat just to shape it up, get nice curves in the front of it. Maybe clean up my weld just a little bit more, but you can see the weld's pretty good. But now it's just to clean up the bar and flatten it. Clean off the flux because we want to start getting a nice surface on the shoe now. Overlapping blows. Pull it out with the round of the hammer again. I'll put a lot of effort into this because this is one of the major features of the shoe, that bar. So it needs one more heat just to finish it off. Okay, we've got the back half of our shoe made now. Now I need a heat on each branch, just shape them up and full of them. So I'm going to get some flow in the outside branch, hemming it at the same time. I'm not hemming it behind the quarters though, I'm just shaping it behind the quarters. I'm making sure I keep the distance parallel on the inside. So the distance between the fullering and the inside of the shoe apparel. It doesn't come out where the shoe gets wider. The, the material's extended to the outside of the full ring, not to the inside.
I've got my fullering half done, I'll clean up my edges. Box it off while we're here, right through the heel with the round of your hammer where it curves in. And then back to the flat of the hammer to go around the corner. Now I'll do our nail holes. Work the edges, and that branch is finished now. Making sure the full ring's deep enough where the toenail is. Now it's a repetition onto the inside branch. And the edge of the shoe for the full ring. And I, I full it slowly. Mark it slowly because the mark is everything. Now I can go quicker. Once I'm halfway through, I'll clean it. I'll work the edges. I'll level it. My blows overlap so we get a nice shiny finish. I've got the picture in my mind and I know what 130 mil should look like. Now we need a clip with a cross peen hammer because this is quite a small shoe and the gap between the nail holes isn't very much and if you look at the picture from Calgary you can see there's not a big gap between the nail holes so a cross peen is the type of hammer that you want to use. Set the clip.
So I'm just going to give it a wire brush now. I've checked the width, so I'm right on the width. Back punch the holes. If we have time, we'd go and rasp it. If not, we just check the nail holes for an MX60. Yep, so there we've got a good hammer finish shoe that will only be enhanced with a little bit of rasping. Just taking a few minutes now, we've rasped the shoe up, filed it up, give it its final leveling. There's my interpretation of the picture. Mm -hmm.